Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a jack-o'-lantern placemat. So this is a pumpkin-shaped placemat, and on one side it will have a jack-o'-lantern face, and on the other side it will just be a plain pumpkin. So it's kind of reversible. You can use it for Halloween, then you can flip it over and use it for Thanksgiving. I have a lot of orange fabrics here. So these are all orangey pumpkin-y colors that would look really good. This is a print from RJR. Here's a couple of grunge colors, three different grunges. This one is a really nice Ginny Buyer from RJR. We've got a couple of batiks here. And then this is black batik. It's called Raven. It's a Hoffman batik. And this is what I will do the jack-o'-lantern face out of no matter which background I use. This pattern is one that we have as a free download on our website, so I'm going to show you where to find that. Just go to jordanfabrics.com. And right here, we have a whole section of free patterns right here. So right now, we have the Pumpkin Runner, we have the On Point, we have the Cave Cat. So as soon as we get this pattern written, we will put it on here, and it'll be the top one. So then you would click on it. And then you would click on the big red button that says download the PDF. And that will give you the instructions. And then there will be other buttons to click to give you the templates. Today we're going to be fusing our applique pieces onto the background of the pumpkin. So I have some fusible interfacing here. There's a lot of products that will work for this. This is the kind that you fuse onto your fabric, pull the paper off, and then fuse, uh, fuse onto your appliques and fuse that onto your background. So the first step is to print off the templates and then we're going to trace them. And this is really, really easy because you can see through it. So I'm just going to use a pencil and I will smooth out these lines when I cut them. There are probably other ways of getting your template transferred onto the paper. I don't applique that often and this method works really well for me. So I like to do this. So we've got a, a smiling jack-o'-lantern smile here. And then we have this piece here, which is going to be for both eyes and for the nose. So I've got two eyes and a nose and a mouth. And this isn't the placement I'm going to use on the pumpkin. I just squished them a little bit closer so I can save this paper and I can save more fabric. The next step is to cut our pumpkin, our background for the placemat here. So this download comes on two parts. So you have to print both parts and tape, tape them together. And that will give you half of the pumpkin. So you can either then transfer that to a big piece of paper, or you can leave it in half like this, and then you can fold your fabric in half and put this on the fold and cut it like that. Either way works just fine. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to place this on my fabric and I'm going to draw with a pencil on the back side here. Now you can use a friction pen for this area if you want. Friction pens don't always completely wash out and they don't always disappear with heat, but when you're doing it for the outline of something like this that you're going to cut, it's perfectly safe to use it because when we cut, we're gonna be cutting that line off anyway. So I didn't draw a really dark line, but it's enough for me to see it. You could probably do this with your rotary cutter. I'm just so used to using the scissors on shapes like this and that's pretty easy for me. So here are two at a time. We cut two pumpkins here. The last piece we need is the stem and I already have the pieces cut here. This is also, this template is in the free download. So I've cut two stems because we are gonna put this front to back and flip it right side out. So you need two stem pieces for each placemat. Now, when we're working with iron-on applique, it's real important to iron everything a lot before you use it. So, see, I've got wrinkles here in my batik, so I am going to steam press it. And I've got two layers here, so I'm going to steam press the other side as well. 
you're also going to want to um, steam press your pumpkin. Now I pressed it before I cut it, but I want to steam press it to make sure that any shrinkage that might happen happens before we want to put those appliques on. All right, everything is nice and flat. So now we are going to take one layer of fabric here and we are going to put our fusible webbing on the back here. You always want to make sure that your fusible webbing is on top of fabric here and not on top of your ironing board because otherwise you can fuse it to the ironing board. So I'm just going to do a small section here. So I think I'm just going to cut this off here. Normally, if I'm doing a bunch of placemats, I will draw applique pieces all over it and fill it all up. But for today, I'm just going to show you how to do this one right now. So I am going to put this on here. Just my hot iron will glue it down a little bit temporarily. So it's already sticking, but just a little bit of steam. And then dry it out and it's going to be really, really stuck there. It's glued onto the black really well. Now we are going to cut out on our line. So it's a little bit easier to cut the shapes apart first. Just give yourself a little bit of room here. Then you can work with one piece at a time. So I've got my nice Kai scissors here and I'm just going to make nice smooth cuts. Now we'll get the teeth. So I like to just cut to the point there, make another cut, and then lift it up and snip that away. Here is the mouth. And even though my lines were kind of messy on the back side, when you cut it nice and straight, look at how nice that turned out. Very nice and crisp. Now for the eyes and nose, you could take this to the cutting table and use your rotary cutter, but I think I can get a pretty straight line just with my scissors here. Everything is fused onto the paper fusible here, so you need to just find a corner and pull the paper off. So this is the gluey part. It's still on the back of our piece. So these are curled up a little. That's only because the paper is still on there right now. I've got the pieces all set where I want them to go. So I'm just going to take this over to the ironing board. And I can fuse these on right here. Some people put a press cloth over this, but with the iron I've got just a little steam. And then hold the iron there till it dries. And those pieces are not going to come off. So you can see here, they are glued right on. And that's going to make appliquing them really, really easy. So you have choices now with your stitching. Since it's all the way stuck on there, you could just edge stitch real narrow if you want. You could do a zigzag. You could do a decorative stitch. I'm going to be using black thread right on top of this. So I'm just going to do a satin stitch, which is a really tight zigzag stitch all the way around. You really won't be able to see the stitching that I'm doing, but I want these nice crisp lines to show. Now, if you don't want to use the fusible, you can use the basting glue. So I use this a lot when I applique. So you just put a small amount of this right around, well, not on that piece. You put a small amount of this right around here and it will glue the piece down. You can, you can iron it, this will come out in the wash, but it'll already have been sewn by then. So this is just another option if you don't want to use a fusible webbing. I'm going to sew today on my little Singer patchwork sewing machine here. So this is a fairly new machine for me. It's just a home machine, but it has a lot of stitches here. So we're going to use a zigzag stitch today. So I'm going to use stitch number three, and this is the zigzag stitch. So you can do it very wide or you can do it with a small stitch length like right here. Now, if I show you this on the jack-o'-lantern face, you can't see the stitching at all because I'm doing black on black. So I'm gonna use this stitch right here and 
this is how I'm going to stitch it. So we want our needle to come here and then just go to the outside of the piece there. So we want to cover up as much of the applique piece as we can. So I'm going to do a little practice here so I can make sure that I have the stitch width and length that I want. And I know where that needle's going to go. So we have a lot of corners with the jack-o'-lantern face. So what you do for the corner is you, you sew all the way to the corner. And you end with the needle down, right in the corner. Then you're going to lift your presser foot, turn the corner, and you'll be stitching right over what you just stitched. Same thing here. Leave the needle down, pivot, and go around. And let me show you what this looks like. And this is why I do a practice stitch. So my stitching is not quite far enough off the edge of the patchwork, and that's why I'm getting these little hairy things there. Now I can trim those off with my scissors, but I'd really rather not. So now I know that I need to move over a little bit more, like I did right here. You want the needle going right outside the, the cut piece and covering as much of the edge as possible. Now that I'm happy with my stitching, I'm ready to do my placemat here. So anytime I'm appliquing, I'm going to use some sort of stabilizer underneath it. I like to use newsprint. Um, there are products called uh, Stitch and Tear that are specifically made for appliquing, but I find that thin paper works really well. And that keeps everything flat while you're appliquing. I'm going to start with the mouth. I'm going to start up in the corner here. Now we're coming to the corner here where the tooth is. So we're going to sew right to the end. And again, you might want to move that by hand. And then leave the needle down and pivot. And then you're going to be stitching over your stitching for the first few stitches. Now for this inside corner here, you need to stitch a couple stitches beyond and stop with the needle on the left. Now when we pivot around and we start stitching again, we'll be covering up the edge properly. Same thing here, a couple stitches beyond, needle on the left, So you just keep going around here. It's pretty fun, it's pretty easy. It's all fused on there, so it's not moving at all, which is really nice. I went all the way around the mouth. Now I'm just gonna leave this on here and I'm gonna move right over to the nose. The nose is a lot easier. Now for a really pointy piece like this with less than a 90 degree angle, let me show you what it's going to look like. That's the top of the eye, and we are stitching like this. And you have to be a little bit careful. If you make this stitch go like this, and then you pivot and start this one like this, you can end up with it really wide there. So a lot of times, I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to stop, but when I start sewing this side, I'm not going to start right here. I'm going to move down a little bit and start stitching like this. And that will make it a little bit more pointy. So I'm going to do that after I turn. So I'm not even going to leave the needle down. I'm just going to lift up and pivot. Got some threads caught here. There we go. So instead of starting way up at the top, I'm moving it down, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch, and then starting to stitch. So you can see, even on this one, it's a little bit more pointy and not 
not too wide up there. Now we're just gonna trim our threads and rip the paper off. So the paper will leave hardly any residue at all. Sometimes you get a little bit right, right behind your stitchings. There's a little teeny bit in there, but that's not gonna hurt anything. So this tears away really easily, which is why I like the newsprint. And then we are going to iron our placemat again because once in a while, even though we've got stabilizing paper, you can have a little bit of stretching and distortion and I like it really flat before we finish it up. The next step is to make the stem. So I've got it cut out and I'm gonna put it right sides together. And I'm gonna set this on a piece of scrap batting that has a straight edge and I'm gonna move it off a quarter inch. Now I'm gonna stitch around the outside with a little bit narrower than a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to back tack at the beginning. You want to back tack a lot. Because we have to flip this right side out and we don't want the stitching coming apart. So you'll notice I've switched to my other sewing machine and that's because I just need a straight stitcher and I'm much more comfortable on this machine. Now we're going to trim off all of the extra batting here and we're going to turn it right side out. Now I'm going to trim off just all the extra batting with my sharp scissors here, right even with the cut edge of the stem pieces. Now we're going to turn it right side out and this is where you're glad that you back tacked because you don't want those seams coming undone there. So it's a big enough stem that you can put your fingers in and flip it fairly easily. So I like to put one hand inside and kind of draw it along that seam. And that makes it really flatten out very nicely. You get a nice curve along here. Then I'm going to just put it on the table and I'm just going to hand press it from both sides. Now we're going to edge stitch right around the edge. And this is much easier from one side than it is from the other. And the side that it's easier to stitch from is the side that has the batting up against it. So the batting is up against this side. So that's what we want up when we stitch. So we're gonna put it on the sewing machine this way and stitch around there. I've got dark green thread on here, and that's the color that I'm going to quilt the uh, placemat in also. So I'm gonna just stitch right near the edge. I'm a little less than an eighth of an inch away. And to get around this sharp corner, you might have to pivot a little bit. So sometimes I'll take a few stitches, then I will leave the needle in, lift the presser foot, take a few more, leave the needle in. It'll still make a nice gentle curve, but it's just a little bit easier to get around that tight curve like that. So that looks pretty good. Now you can see it's curling up a little bit here because I stretch it a little as I'm sewing it. But we're gonna take it right over to the ironing board and steam press it and it will go right back into shape. Flattens out very nicely. Now we're ready to put this onto the face of the pumpkin. Here's the stem. It fits right in this straight part on the top of the pumpkin. This is of course the way it will be facing, but this is gonna be tucked inside when we turn the placemat right side out. So we're gonna put this right here on the straight part and we're just going to stitch really close to the edge right now. This is really just to anchor it in place while we put our placemat front to back. You can skip this step if you want and just tuck it in as you sew around. I'll show you when we get to that step. But I find it easier to stitch it on straight there right now. Next step is to sew the placemat front to back. So we're gonna put this on top of the backing and batting. 
and we're going to stitch all the way around the edge. I've got a piece of batting here. I always use the scraps from my quilting, so I have a lot of these scraps that maybe were at the end or the side of a quilt I took off of the machine. This is the Hobbs batting. It's 80-20, and I like this batting really well. I've got my backing here. It's a slightly different fabric than what we used on the top because the placemat is going to be reversible. So we're going to put this on here and we're going to put a couple pins around the edge. I've pinned around the edge here and we are going to sew around the edge. We're using a quarter inch seam, a quarter inch away from that raw edge. And we're gonna leave an opening at the bottom just big enough so I can get my hand in there. I like to back tack at the beginning of this sewing also. It makes the opening a little bit neater, a little bit easier to get it closed. So we're just going to sew all the way around. We're going to pivot where that stem is. And we're going to make sure that we sew to the inside of that stitching. Now when you get to the bottom, usually I'll put my hand here and then I'll see, okay, I want to stop sewing about right there. Now again, we're going to trim off the batting and the backing even, so we're going to trim with our scissors all the way around. So we're just going to trim even, and when we come to where the stem is, you need to make two little snips. So let me show you. It won't flip very well unless we snip right outside. You can feel the stem. You can't really see it, but I can feel it right to your stitching. That way you can see it from the back a little better. When we flip it, the stem will come out without leaving any wrinkles. Now we're going to flip it right side up. So you don't need a very big opening, but it is nice to get your hand inside there because then you can put one hand in and one hand out and just make sure that there's no you don't want this tucked in here. You want it pushed all the way out against the sewing line. So I've got one hand inside and I'm drawing it along that seam and I'm kind of pinching it with this hand. Then I'm gonna to move to the middle again here. Pinch it as I go and just poke out with the inner hand. Draw the fingernail along the seam all the way around. And this should make it lay really flat. So you can smooth it out and hand press it here. Do the same thing from the other side. It's looking pretty good. Now again, we're going to edge stitch. And the batting is up against the back of the runner. So we are going to put this side up and stitch around. We're going to, again, just edge stitch a little less than an eighth of an inch from the edge. So I'm just gonna go around these curves and then I'm gonna stop when I get to the opening and I'll show you how we get that closed. Now for the opening, there's several ways to get this closed. You can pin it, turn it in, and stitch it by hand. I find that if I just roll it in there and pull with this hand so there's a little tension, it tends to turn right in the right amount. And then I'm just going to stitch it closed as I do my edge stitching. And you probably won't even be able to tell if there was any opening there. Now I'm going to take it over and steam press it so that any of these edges that got stretched a little will go back to their proper shape. Ready to quilt the pumpkin. 
you have options here. You could go around the eyes, around the mouth, but I like to put the pumpkin lines in. So I made two copies of the pumpkin template and I cut out this one so that I can draw the lines on here. So this is just half a pumpkin and I cut away part of it along the lines. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. This is the template that you can print off. I just made two copies and then I cut it out here and cut out this one so that I can use this as a stencil to draw my lines. So I'm gonna make some light lines on here. You might not be able to see them, but I will be able to see them enough to sew over them. And then they'll be pretty easy to get off afterwards. So I'm using the Roxanne's Quilter's Choice. It's a chalk pencil. And it's pretty easy to remove. And it completely washes out so we won't have to worry about any lines remaining. But we can rub it off too. So you can see the faint line here. And I just use it as a guide. I don't always sew right on the line. I want to make a nice curve. So sometimes I will go off, but I'll be able to remove all of that. So I'm using the same color thread that I edge stitched in. It's a really dark green. And I'm going to start right in the line, the continuous line where the stem was put on. So you can sew this in one continuous piece. I'm just gonna keep going around the lines and I'm just holding it in place. You can pin it, but it really doesn't need it. Nothing seems to move. Now I'm just gonna pivot and head down here. Here's the jack-o'-lantern placemat. Really fun to make, really quick. So you can pick the method you want for putting the appliques on. I've made them with the fusible or I've made them just with the glue basting and the nice thing is when Halloween is over it's reversible so this side is just perfect for Thanksgiving. Now if you don't want to make your pumpkin happy we've included a scary template also. So here's the scary face. You can make some of each. Really really a fun project so they look good not only on the table you can always put them on your door. We just had so much fun making these. So we've got the free download. You can print it off. Use two different fabrics. You'll have two different looks then. And I think Matt has these in a kit. So he's put the fabrics all together. You'll have to cut it because you have to cut your appliques after you put the fusible on. And they're just so much fun to make. So. Thanks for watching our tutorial today with the jack-o'-lantern placemats. Oh, oh.